If you're frustrated with the limitations of any particular versions of Planner, or if you want to customize how it works, you can build your own. You might think that you couldn't possibly do better than Microsoft at making a tool, but the thing is, you know exactly what you want it to do. Microsoft can't tailor something the way every single person wants, but you can make something that perfectly fits what you want. So we're gonna build our own version of Planner today, and here's all the reasons why. We can add our own custom fields. You can currently do this in Premium Planner, but you can't get them back out in reporting, and you can't do it at all in Standard Planner. We can connect directly to the data where it lives, schedule a refresh on it with Power BI. We can set alerts for ourselves on either the whole plan or specific tasks, and we can get those notifications either in a digest email set to a schedule or one by one. We can set specific fields to be required for our tasks. We have a version history, so we can see who changed what when. We can sort, filter, and group our tasks right in the UI. We can set up our own conditional formatting rules to color code things the way we want. We can trigger actions when specific things are modified. We can also bulk paste a whole table worth of tasks from something like ChatGPT as kind of a DIY copilot. And we can manage things about the projects themselves. So what department they're for, what vertical they're in, what product they're related to, that kind of thing. What we don't have, and I wanna be very upfront about this, is we don't have recurrence on tasks. And we also don't have subtasks. So we're gonna go through how to do this step-by-step. Step. This will be a multi-part video series. So in this video, we are going to build our basic planner with a board view. Part two, we'll be making the flow to automatically set the completed date and the percentage complete when a task is marked as complete. And part three, we'll be creating the reporting based on this data and scheduling refresh on it in Power BI. But we're gonna use every tool that we have at our disposal today and it's going to be pretty awesome. Microsoft Lists is one of the most versatile tools in Microsoft 365 and I really love it. So we are going to go to the app launcher in Microsoft 365 and choose lists from your menu. In lists, you can choose to create a new list and choose blank list. Here's where you get to choose where your list is stored. So at the bottom here, it says save to my list don't save it to my lists, okay? That's like your personal storage space. You're making something that is going to be used ongoing, right? So choose a SharePoint site that you want it to live in. If you don't have one here that you wanna use, you can create one in SharePoint. I'm gonna call mine DIY Planner Template because we are going to use this to create new lists from this template so that we don't have to create it from scratch every single time. You can choose an icon if you want to and create. So this first column here is gonna be our task title. You can rename it if you want to, then column settings if you wanted to rename, but we're gonna add the rest of our columns here. So we want an assign to column. We're gonna use person type because that lets us do a lookup on all of the Microsoft Microsoft 365 people profiles and we can use that metadata in our reporting so we can extract the employee department their manager that kind of thing from the profile I'm gonna call this assign to and under more options you can choose to allow multiple selections if you want to allow multiple assignees save our next column is gonna be start date so choose date and time type next and save same thing for due date Next is our status column. I'm intentionally making this a choice column instead of a yes, no column because I want some indicator that something is in progress, right? Other than a percentage complete because you wanna know when somebody's started on something before they've made any progress on it, or at least I do. I'm gonna call this task status and for our choices, we'll do not started in progress and complete. You can set the colors for these if you want to. I kind of like to not overdo the colors, so I set no styles for not started, maybe blue for in progress and green for complete. And then we want to set our default value. So I'm going to set the default value to not started because I want that to be preset when I create tasks and save. Next we're going to do percentage complete. I'm going to do number for this and then just set the format of the number to be a percentage and then save. So we can add a description in here if we want to, that would be multiple lines of text. You can choose under more options whether you want it to be enhanced rich text or not, so that includes pictures, tables, and hyperlinks. I'm gonna leave that off, but you can do what you like. I wanna point out here that Power BI, when it pulls rich text data, it pulls it with HTML, and it's really hard to strip out the HTML. So if you're planning on showing the description in Power BI, I would leave it as plain text. So next is priority, that's gonna be choice. What I like to do for these is 
prefix the choices with numbers so that I can sort by them. Because if you sort by a choice field like this, it's going to sort alphabetically by default. And usually that's not exactly what you want it to be. And I want to point out here that you can actually use emojis in these choice values. So if you wanted your urgent to have an exclamation point like it does in Planner, you can right click into the field and then click on emoji. This only works in Windows, by the way. And then if I search for this exclamation point, it'll pop up. And set the colors if you want to and a default value if you like and save. So next is going to be our buckets. So buckets are going to be what we group by in the board view. We're going to do choice again for this and do the same thing here that we did with the priorities. So if you want your buckets to sort in a particular way, particularly when you get into the reporting side, put a number in front of them using kind of PMI style buckets here. Executing always seems a bit dire but that's okay. So we got a couple more. We're going to do our flags and then we're going to do some custom columns because we can. So flags in planner is a multiple choice field. So choose whatever values you want for your flags. Just have two for simplicity. Put an emoji in here if you want to. I'm going to leave the default value blank because I don't actually want it to be pre-applying flags and then turn on allow multiple selections if you want multiple flags in there. All right, on to our custom columns. So we can do estimated and actual effort hours here if we want to. We can do whatever we want. We can do t-shirt size for sprint planning or story points, anything like that. So I'm going to do number type for this. It's going to be estimated for hours. You can choose if you want a decimal or not here. I want to point out that when the data comes out the other end, it often has a decimal anyways. This is just whether or not it's showing the decimal in the UI. And one more. This one's going to be actual hours. What you can do with this is basically say, did this perform over or under budget? You can kind of estimate cost easier for projects when you use these things. I'm going to make one of these required just so you can see what happens when you do that in Power Automate. So if I go to column settings, edit, I'm going to require this column just for sake of example. While we're here, I want to point out that you can change the column width here. If you drag them, that's only going to change it for yourself for the current session. If you go into this little carrot menu, go to column settings and then go to widen or narrow this column, that's going to change it for everybody using the list. Oh, I have one more column to add. So we're going to add a column for completed date. So completed date is going to be something that we set with Power Automate automatically when a task is marked as complete. So I'm going to do date time. This time I'm going to turn the time on because you might want to know what time something was completed and save that. So our template is set up. I'm going to leave this list blank. You could have some starter tasks in here if all of your projects start exactly the same way but I kind of want this to be a blank template. This makes it so we don't have to manually set up all of the fields every single time we go to create a new project. I'm going to go back to Microsoft Lists and I'm going to create a new list and choose the list that we just created as the list to create from. So we're going to choose from existing list and then choose the site that the template is in. Select the template, click next, and then choose where you want to put it. This part is easy to miss. Don't put it in my list put it in a real site and then click create. And it's now created that list for us. So having exactly the same columns on these lists every time is really going to help if you try to combine the data later in Power BI because it's going to want the column names to be the same. So now I want some data. I'm going to show you my cool trick to get sample data um, using ChatGPT. So this is kind of like a Copilot Lite for free using the free version of ChatGPT. So I'm going to paste a prompt in here. I'm going to put this in probably a blog article or something in case you want to copy and paste. But essentially what we're doing is we're asking ChatGPT to create a table of tasks to do some given thing. So for the table columns, use the ones in the screenshot. So I'm going to take a screenshot from our list. I'm going to zoom out so I can get all of the fields in the view and then do a screen snip, make these a little bit wider. So I'm using the free version of ChatGPT, by the way, for this. I'm going to copy that screen snip and I'm going to paste it into the bottom of this box. So I'm giving it what my values, my possible values should be for the columns. And then I'm giving it the column names as a screenshot. So if I hand it this, the example I'm using is um, tasks to create a new restaurant. So it's going to make a markdown table. I'm going to zoom out so this is easier to copy paste. So I gave it Adele's account. So Adele is my test account. She came with this tenant, so she's not a real person. I'm going to copy and paste just the values in the rows. 
So I'm gonna click on edit and grid view up here and then click where it says add new item. And it kind of auto created a blank task for me when I did that, but I'm just going to leave this box highlighted and paste in my table. Don't put your cursor inside this box. So don't click twice in the box. If you have the blinky cursor, you've gone too far. We just want it outlined and paste. Do you see it's creating these tasks? So because I use the email address of the people in my organization, it was able to fill those in and actually link that back to the user profiles. So when I hover on this, it's got my person information and that's cool. Make sure everything looks all right and then we're good to go. So let's create our board view now. The board view, I'm gonna zoom back in so you can read this now that we're done pasting stuff. We can create a board view in this add view menu right here in the top right corner of the view selectors. So I'm gonna call this board buckets and then choose the show as board option here and then choose what you want to group it by. So this is going to be a view that is by bucket, but you can use other choice fields to group these things if you want to and then click create. So by default, the first column in our board view is this unassigned items. You can collapse this. So I'm just going to collapse it and then we can choose which fields we want to show on these cards. So go to the view menu here and choose add or remove fields. So the fields that you want to show on the card have to be added to this view in order to be displayed. So if there's anything that's not showing that you want to show, just check the box next to it here and hit apply. All my fields are already in here so I can skip that. And then we go to customize card in the same menu. Customize card lets us control what shows on the card. So if I wanted the percentage complete, the priority, maybe the completed date time. I don't really want the description, maybe the flags and then click save and close. So another thing a lot of people want to do with task data is to show it in a Gantt view. There's not a great option for Gantt views in SharePoint. Your options are classic lists, which are probably going to be deprecated eventually. You can do custom JSON formatting. So there's a couple of templates out there for Gantt's. I haven't seen one that I actually like that is based in SharePoint. Our other option is to use Power BI. So Power BI has a few options for Gantt charts. We're gonna get to that in the Power BI video. So you can subscribe if you wanna see how that shakes out. So we're pretty good to go at this point. I'm gonna go through a few different options in SharePoint if you want to customize this further. So you can add more views. You can add as many as you want. You can have a view that is filtered on assigned to me. So let me actually show you that one because that's kind of interesting. So we're gonna do assigned to me. So this is going to dynamically show people only the things that are assigned to them. We can make this a list view or whatever kind of view we want and create. And then we are going to in the view settings. So this menu right here go to edit the current view and that drops us back to this old school view editor so what we're going to do is we're going to set under the filter option here show items only when the following is true and we're going to set this to assigned to is equal to me in square brackets these square brackets are a magical sharepoint thing that just works. So another thing that you can do with these is you can set them to things due today or yesterday or in the next two weeks. The syntax for that is today in square brackets. So if you do today in square brackets minus 30, that's 30 days ago. You can do greater than, less than there. So if you wanted things due in the next week, you could say with a due date that is less than today plus seven and then add a second filter on there for status is not complete anyways tangent this is assigned to me you can sort this on something so you could sort by start dates ascending and then click okay so confusingly this dropped me back into the sharepoint view of this list so sharepoint lists and microsoft lists are the same thing they're just viewed two different ways so this is still the same list okay we can go back if we go back to our other list here and just refresh the page you'll see that there's another tab here that is assigned to me and I see only my own items. That's what we want. Other things we can do with this are go to the version history. So that's in the ellipses menu version history. I couldn't figure out a way to get to this from the board view. It's gotta be in the list view because the menu selector for it isn't on the board view, but it works. We can also add comments on here. We can set an alert for the entire list in this ellipses menu in the toolbar. So alert me. That's where we can do the digest 
subscription, one of the very underutilized features of SharePoint. You can also set an alert on a specific item with the ellipses menu, alert me on the item. That'll tell you if it changes. So for example, if there's some really important task that you're tracking and you wanna know when something happens with it, you can set an alert on that specific task. You can sort and filter these things in the carrot menu up here, and you can export with the toolbar up here. So you can export this to Excel, CSV, Power BI. I'm gonna talk about this one in the Power BI video. So let's talk about next steps. Next steps would be to create any automation on this that you want. So we're going to do a Power Automate flow on this that automatically sets the completed date and the percent complete for things where the status changes to complete. So subscribe if you want to be notified when that comes out. Otherwise, thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day.